Friends, today's NRI Samai program from Los Angeles brought to you commercial free by listeners like you. Your generous donations make possible for us to stay commercial free. And today's show is pre recorded. If you have a question for the guest, please send an email to nri samai at gmail.com. We will follow up with the guest and find the answer for you. Thank you for your support. Welcome to NRI Samai Weekend Shows. As part of Know Your Neighbor series, we are privileged to host Fatima Lodi, a young social activist born in Karachi and brought up in Islamabad. She is here to share commonalities between brothers and sisters on either side of the border. Her campaigns include Dark is Divine, which is against color discrimination in Pakistan, and Women Empowerment. Thanks, Fatima, for joining us today. Thank you, Akhil, for having me. Thanks, Fatima. So, Fatima, for the benefit of our audience, can you please tell us about your background and how you got into activism? Um, sure. Um, basically, as you told that I was uh, raised in Karachi, um, actually born in Karachi, and I was raised in Islamabad. Um, my forefathers were um, from, you know, from Bombay Presidency, and then we moved to Karachi. And then I was born there, of course, and um, I was living in Karachi. I was born over there. Then we moved to Islamabad, and my schooling was half of my schooling was in Karachi, and half of my schooling was in Islamabad. And um, in Islamabad, I started off with my, I basically joined the world of activism when I was in my higher school, um, A level, that is. And how I came into activism was um, I was actually attending one of the conferences where I met this um, organization, which is which was of disabled persons. And there I thought of, you know, um, started working for for the less privileged people because at that that time I thought that the less privileged, so I wanted to work for them. And then I, in 2009, I started working for a um, different organization as a volunteer. And this is how I basically came into the world of activism. Oh, okay. So now uh, you founded the uh, Darkest Divine Campaign, right, which is uh, uh, about, about the color discrimination, especially among women in Pakistan, right? So can you tell a little about exactly. that? Exactly. Um, Color, basically, the word I would use, use this word is going to be colorism. And um, actually, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to teach people, first of all, that there is a hell lot of difference between racism and colorism. You know, living in Pakistan, or if you talk about Asia as a whole, um, it's not called racism when somebody discriminates me from the same race. That's obviously not called racism, that's called colorism. So this is something that I'm also trying to teach to our people that, you know, don't call the person who discriminates you on the basis of your skin color. He's not a racist, but he's a colorist. And um, as you can also relate to it that um, these are all the diseases of colonialization. And um, not only in Pakistan, but uh, across the Asia, we, we do have these um, like issues of um, colorism. And we do discriminate on the basis of skin color of our people. So um, I thought of starting this campaign, um, which basically started this issue, because there are a lot of uh, organizations that are working, you know, working on the issues of women empowerment or gender inequality or they're talking about, you know, religious uh, equality or rape and talking about everything, but they were missing out these, you know, ingrained issues. So I wanted to work on that since um, I have, you know, I have seen people going through this um, issue of colorism. I have faced it myself, so I know how it feels, so I wanted to work on it. So um, finally in 2013, I decided to launch this campaign by the name of Darkest Demand, and it's not only working in Pakistan, but it's now it's a global campaign. It's also working in India, it's in Nepal as well, in Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and you know, it's more like amazing. It's covering the South countries as well as um, across Asia, and now it's global as well. Yeah, that's that's really great, and. Uh... 
uh, impressive. So, uh, how is the response from the people, like, you know, the common people in Pakistan, how they are responding to this campaign? How much support that you are getting? Um, well, I'll be very honest. Uh, when I started started off with this campaign, everybody was, like, shocked that, are you serious? Can our complexion be beautiful? Because we've got such mindsets over here. Um, not only in Pakistan, but across Asia. The response has been, you know, first of all, they were all criticizing me for something that I've started, which was, you know, um, like coming up with a campaign like Dark of the Mind, and it was basically not a piece of cake. It was like going against um, millions of people's, you know, against millions of people's mindsets. And... Um, Obviously, it was not easy for me because it was something very different. Um, I was like going against the tent. So um, the response uh, in the beginning was very different. It was not, you know, very unexpected for me at least um, because uh, I never, I've never seen people, you know, responding to the unfair advertisements that are 24 7 shown on, on our television screens about the fairness screens. Um, I mean, they're okay with such advocates, but they were not okay with the um, concept of dark being beautiful or dark being divine. So again, I started writing different articles and started, you know, um, arranging different awareness sessions so that, you know, they can understand the concept of um, the campaign. I also remember when I um, contacted... Um, um, basically, a newspaper agency, and I was like, I need to, you know, pop, I need to get this article published, and they actually refused. And they were like, okay, we we don't um, work on such issues. And um, ma'am, to be very honest, it's not an issue at all. Color discrimination is not an issue at all. And I was shocked. I was like, seriously, how can one think like this? Because it's something that is there, and we have been practicing it since ages. So uh, but now, uh, you know, with the passage of time, it, it has been amazing. Um, we, we have gone global, so it's, it's going great. Yeah, I, you mentioned uh, in your comment, which is about the attitude of the people towards the color, where uh, we think that, uh, uh, I mean, being dark is not good, and uh, million dollars are uh, poured into advertisement campaign for commercials where you get, like, fair and lovely or other fairness creams, with all these exactly. stars. So, like, what do you think about that entire campaign? Um, in the campaign of the fairness screens, you're talking about that? Uh, exactly. I'm talking about the stars who actually endorse okay. the fairness screens and, you know, which indirectly sets that mindset that dark well, is good. Well, um, to be very honest, Akshay, they're, they're just, you know, um, making money and they don't care about the outcomes or um, the message they're portraying. Um, you know, they don't think of the, um, what, what, what I should use, you know, the longer impact it creates, they don't care about that. All they care about is the money they are generating from it. And they're actually playing with the emotions of the people out there because they know they want to, you know, become fair, they're not happy with their complexions. So they're like, why not we, you know, they've been advantage of this thing. And um, that's why these advertisements are there, these screens are there. I mean, um, and if you talk about the, um, the actors, then again, um, they're basically the role models of many people out there. So do they see these, uh, you know, such um, personalities going for these screens and buying it as shown in the, you know, um, advertisements that might be following that? I can tell you one example. Um, the maid, um, my maid, basically, I was in conversation with her. And um, this was basically a long time back um, when I didn't even thought of starting this campaign. Um, I was in, in conversation with her, and I was like, you know, we haven't used um, a fan of screen. And she was like, of course, um, Baji, I have. And I was shocked. I was like, what do you mean by of course? Um, I mean, then I got to know that they can, you know, um, save 30 rupees or 30 rupees for such screens because it's something they think it's important for them to use. It's compulsory for them. 
Um, so yeah, it was very funny, but this is a fact, this is a reality. And that is why, um, you know, people are blindly following because there's role models are, um, you know, showing, it's showing, uh, in, it's showing different advertisements that they're using touch screen. So that's why there's, a, you know, um, a lot of people that um, following these um, advertisements blindly. So actually, when I look at the Dark is Divine campaign, it reminds me about another campaign that is being run in India, which is Dark is Beautiful. So do you have any oh, yes, idea about yes. this campaign? Um, um, yeah, basically what happened during the campaign I have started was um, I got to know about this campaign in the U.S., which was Dark is Beautiful. So um, I got some idea from that. But if that, uh, then again, Black is Beautiful was working um, on racism and in Asia we don't have the issues of racism but we do have the problems of colorism in terms of color discrimination. So the campaign, my campaign is um, you know, all about colorism I mean, um, and then I got to, of course, I got to know about this Dr. Spirit campaign as well um, whose ambassador is Nandita Das and um, and again, it's it's an amazing campaign. Um, when I saw the history, it was started in 2009, and of course, it's a very you know senior campaign. And I'm I'm sure it's going well. It's um, because they've got a lot of ambassadors um, as well. Because um, as as far as I remember, um, I think two years back they were um, only restricted to India. They were only working in India. Um, but then I was like, yeah, I need to have a campaign for Pakistan as well because um, there was no such thing in Pakistan. Nobody was doing anything for Pakistan. So I took a bold stand and I was like, I need to work uh, and redefine the unrealistic standards of beauty that our society has set for us. Yeah, that's uh, really impressive. So uh, to bring the awareness about this issue, what are the different kinds of activities that you, you, know, uh, that you take regularly? I mean, how you bring more awareness about this? Okay. Um, what basically we do is that um, we go to different universities, we go to different schools, and there we you know, get in conversation with the students. And we've also designed a manual, um, a training manual. And um, what we do is that um, when we go to different schools, we um, we do different activities with the kids because um, I believe the school going age is the age when the personality development takes place. And that is the right age when I can or the society or the mothers can tell their kids that listen, we need to respect difference and we need to learn to celebrate diversity. So, um, this is basically the main message that we try to give. And uh, we also have this online uh, web radio, which is worldwide, and it's called Darkest Demand Dark Radio. And through that, we can, um, you know, we have online sessions over there as well regarding colorism, regarding the unrealistic standards of beauty. As well as we're working on the positive body image, because the media is trying to portray um, a a very perfect you know, body image that decides your concept and the model like look. So um, what we're trying to do is we're also trying to um, you know, teach people about the media, um, the media messages and everything. So um, we want to make our, um, our society, our people media literate so that they at least know that all the images that are shown on media are the airbrushed and the you know, photoshopped versions and they're not real at all. So they shouldn't follow them blindly. So, I mean, uh, you have been uh, working this for several years, right? So do you have any interesting story that you want to share with us during your campaign? Um, yeah, uh, definitely I would share it with you. Um, I, I also remember that um, interesting in a sense that um, a lot of girls, they have been sharing their personal experiences. And um, I, one day I received a, a message from a boy from India. And um, I think that guy was from Chennai, and uh, he was like, why are you talking about girls, girls, girls? Um, you should realize that boys have feelings too, and I have been discriminated throughout my life from, from my friend's mother. And she used to call me Knight. Um, my nickname was Knight, and um, because my brother was 
scratched him, so you know she used to call him. She still calls him um, day, and she calls me night. So I was like, yeah, we need to, you know, we know, uh, we shouldn't restrict the campaign to a girl only. And um, what we should do is that we should also talk about the boys. Um, although we say that boys are not, you know, psychologically affected by colorism, but um, you know, they do get affected, obviously. So um, that was a turning point, and then I thought that you know I should um, not only restrict it to boys only. So now it's for both uh, women and men out there. Friends, NRI Samay is a non-profit independent alternate media from Los Angeles, USA, which brings positive stories from grassroots activists from all corners of India and across the world. NRI Samay does not rely on corporate funding and our shows are commercial free. We only rely on your donations. Corporate funded media is driven by the TRP rating and profits are blurring the distinction between news and entertainment. Why do our news channels talk so much about cricket, movies, accidents, popular figures, personal lives, babies of heroines, gossips, etc.? while they should be covering the struggles of people inequality in our society rural issues and border security issues why did our media raise some corruption crusaders to the sky on one day and shut them off completely when graft charges were raised on those cor- corporate sponsors media relies so much on the corporate funding and government blessings that they cannot report independently nri samay is different We don't accept funds from any corporations and hence our shows are commercial free. We completely rely on donations from you. Please consider donating to NRI Samay and please go to nrisamay.com and donate generously. This is the only way together that we can continue NRI Samay. All donations are kept transparent on nrisamay.com. And if you have any questions, please write to nrisamay@gmail.com. So, uh, compared to you know previous decades, no, now actually uh, career aspiring, I mean, the aspiration for a bright career has gone yes, up yes. in women thanks to the women empowerment. So, how do you see uh, the problem of uh, this issue among the working women? Only working women. Um, and actually, I'm also sure, you know pointing this thing out that. um is a dark skin women whenever they apply for the jobs um you know the fair fair skin women they do have an upper hand they do have an upper edge when applying for the jobs that place them in the public eye because maybe if if i'm dark skin and i want to become um a, a hostess an a hostess and um that's my passion but i cannot because i'm dark skin um because If, if I go and I apply for that, definitely I would be asked to you know apply a foundation just to you know um, cover the the actual complexion that I have and to make my skin fair. So these are some of the issues that women do face when they apply for jobs because um, in our society, when I say in our society, I'm talking about Asia as a well. whole. Um, what happens is that um, when a dark skin woman apply for a job, she she is likely to be that you you miss fit for such a job because um, you know they clearly mention that you need to be presentable. You know, a girl applying for such post needs to be presentable. In our, in our society, you know, being presentable is directly linked with having a fair complexion because you know beauty has been associated with white skin. since ages um you know the so white concept and um the fairy tales and everything that have been promoting this um fairness uh, you know the, the, you know yeah. can you hear me yeah i can hear you yeah the fairness concept they have been promoting that so um whenever a dark skin woman apply for a front desk job as such as the receptionist or she wants to go and work for the media as an anchor TV anchor or any other subjects. Um, 
they're, you know, they're rejected somehow and they're told that they're a misfit. And if they does get recruited and um, uh, if that woman does get recruited, she's told that you need to, you know, you need to put a lot of makeup so that your actual complexion is not rounded at all. Or they put a lot of, you know, lights on her so that she looks she not to be fair skinned. So uh, other than uh, this issue, what do you think that uh, uh, women in urban or rural areas are facing, uh, I mean, are facing nowadays? The problem with women is urban, um, urban areas, right? Talking yeah. about urban areas. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, um, you know, the organization, they're always talking about um, equality, equality, you know. But um, what I believe is that there is no equality between the women of urban areas as well. What to talk about the equality between the women of urban and rural areas. Because um, there are a lot of um, issues. For example, let's, I'll give you a very small example that um, let's suppose there are two women and um, they are from urban area. And one of them has been discriminated throughout her life. Um, it could be any sort of discrimination, right? And the other one um, has never been discriminated. So the definition of uh, women empowerment, or the definition of empowerment is going to be totally different to both of them. And the tools of empowerment are going to be totally different. Because one needs to be, you know, um, we need to work on the grassroots level. Um, and uh, the one who has been discriminated um, will have a very different concept of what empowerment is. So we need to work on the grassroots issues first. And the problem that we have here is that um, if then um, if we talk about um, the working women or someone who who is you know trying to get a job, then um, the safari system is much there. You know, if if someone have uh, a good um, you know um, connection somewhere, then definitely that person is likely you know, that woman is likely to uh, likely to get a good job, and you know she ends up somewhere really nice in some good organization as compared to the other women. So um, not only in terms of jobs, but if we talk about um, other things and, um, you know, in other um, sectors of society, this is something that we do practice. Um, um, there is no such equality among the same gender. So um, instead of talking about gender you know, inequality that men and women have to be, you know, they you know, should get the um, same rights and this and that, we need to talk on the um, on, on women first and forget about the men because uh, there's a lot of issues between women um, only. If I talk about uh, regarding my campaign, what I try to give is that um, the women, um, they have been compared, um, you know, since the time she was born, she has been compared with her sister or her cousins or the other, you know, um, friends out there, the female friends out there, on the basis of her looks. So um, there is no equality between how can you talk about gender equality as a whole. So um, then again, the um, tools of empowerment have to be different and cannot be applied on every woman. The same tools cannot be applied on, on every woman. So actually, uh, like uh, from the activism, I just wanted to change the topic a little more into the relations between India and Pakistan. And especially uh, for the past five or six years, I mean, the two nations, they, they play cricket a lot. And it looks like uh, uh, yesterday, Pakistan Cricket Board Chairman had met with uh, Indian Finance Minister uh, about the uh, bilateral uh, cricket series. And if I'm not wrong, you are the granddaughter of Abbas Khan Lodi, who was a wicket keeper of uh, our teams before independence. How do you think that okay. uh, you know, uh, you know, a bilateral series or the relations in the sports can uh, bring good relations between the two countries? Um, well, basically, um, sport, sport, you know, it, it ha it's always been a universal language. And it can be a powerful tool as well to promote peace and tolerance between two countries. So I think cricket can be uh, one of such tools um, to promote peace and tolerance and understanding. And, like, you know, 
um, probably when we talk about cricket between um, Pakistan and India, it could be a very good team to bring, you know, these two countries together, uh, together and bringing people together across families. And uh, this is also, I would say, it's also kind of a cultural exchange as well between um, India and Pakistan, and obviously religion as well. And um, I would say thing is they do, you know, the values um, it's um, trying to um, promote is teamwork and fairness, discipline, respect for the for the other person, uh, for the you know, the other team you're um, playing with, the opponent, um, as we say. Um, or the competitor. So, um, game is, is, you know, throughout the world is understood um, as a tool of peace, of promoting peace. So, I think it's going to be something really good that if we um, start having such, um, you know, if we start using sports as um, a tool of um, you know, generating violence and peace um, between Pakistan and India. Thanks, Fatima, for uh, you know sharing all these wonderful experiences and about your great work in uh, 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 Darkest Divine campaign. And you know, if anyone is interested in uh, supporting this campaign or interested in offering some help, how do you think that they can approach you? Um, they can definitely contact um, um, NRI and they can, you know, get to me. Or we do have a page on um, Facebook by the name of Start is Divine. And um, let me remind you one one thing uh, one, once again that we're not only distributed to Pakistan, but we're also working in India. We are in US as well. We're working with all the communities um, throughout the world. Um, basically um, focusing the Asians and the Africans. Um, this is where colorism is um, much more prevalent to go there. So they can contact me through um, my Facebook page or they can just Google me uh, by the name of Fatima Lubi and they can get in touch with me, definitely. Yeah, we are actually uh, inching closer to our uh, show. Do you have any final comments or any final message? Um, I would I would just um, like to say this that you know we need to learn to be comfortable in our own skins and uh, that we are very divine and we need to respect differences we need to celebrate diversity and of course um, live in this life. Thank you. Yes, thanks a lot, Fatima, for uh, spending a valuable time with us and you yeah, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Friends, if you liked today's show, please go to youtube.com forward slash NRA Samay and click on the subscribe button. You will get notified every time we publish a new show. And you can also like us on our social media sites like Facebook, Twitter and Google+.